So let's review macroeconomic stabilization policies. When federal policymakers, the federal government or the Federal Reserve, step in and help to stabilize the economy from its ups and downs. Why would a rich country like the U.S. need such a thing? Well, as the COVID-19 crisis is showing, we are inherently unstable. Although most years have positive GDP growth, so real gross domestic product or gross domestic product adjusted for inflation has its ups and downs. Most years here you see positive growth rate, meaning the economy is overall growing, but every time you see these vertical gray bars, a recession is hitting and a recession is when GDP is falling or has fallen for two consecutive quarters. So there's no guarantee that we're always going to have positive growth rate. You can see every time we have these recessions, times are rough. Unemployment rises, spousal abuse rises, suicide rises. There's economic and non-economic costs and people don't like those, right? So stabilization policy. Since the 1940s, the U.S. government has agreed to maintain or do its best to maintain low unemployment, stable prices, and a growing GDP. If we were to graph real GDP over time, we'd see that there are ups and downs, and we call this the business cycle. The tops are called the peaks, the bottoms are called the troughs. When real GDP is expanding, it's called an expansion. Here are your expansions. When it's contracting, it's called a recession. And what would be super sweet is to not have to deal with the ups and the downs. Steady, long-run growth is the goal. So what causes the ups and downs of the business cycle? Well, there are many, many, many causes. Stock market crash, real estate crash, public health crisis, these can all spark recessions and expansions can be the reverse. But at the heart of it, it comes down to a change in the circular flow. Either buyers or sellers in the goods market change the amount that they're doing. So it could start from the supply side. There is evidence that some of the recessions in the 1970s were supply side recessions. So perhaps the production of oil is cut or more likely it's on the demand side. So on the demand side, the demanders in the goods market, consumers, households, suddenly drop the amount of money that they're spending. And what's gonna happen is that the dollars that they were sending disappear or shrink rapidly. The amount of goods that they were sending over to households also shrinks. You have a demand side recession. Both sides are shrinking. Both sides are unhappy. There's nothing pulling the economy out of this downward spiral. Except to the rescue, <laughs> the government. Fiscal and monetary policy. Fiscal policy is when the federal government changes its spending or taxes to stabilize changes in our private spending and production. Every president, Democratic and Republican, since the 30s basically has practiced fiscal policy to stabilize. So the government changes its spending and taxes. You could do a tax cut during the recession like George W. Bush did. During the 2008 Great Recession, Barack Obama used a stimulus. So that's increasing government spending um, Donald Trump in 2020, stimulus for the COVID-19 recession, expanding government spending. Super important to remember that the founder of macroeconomics, John Maynard Keynes, thought that the government should also raise taxes and cut spending during expansion. Notice that our politicians prefer not to ever raise taxes and prefer usually not to cut spending. Hint, it's and pretty monetary politically policy unpopular to do either of those things. It's similar in effect, but a different set of tools. So the Federal Reserve, an unelected body of economists and bankers and others, 
that also conduct federal stabilization policy, they change the money supply to change the interest rate, and that indirectly affects and stabilizes borrowing and therefore spending. Cutting the interest rate makes it easier to borrow and spend. In a recession, expect interest rates to drop. And indeed, you can see during recessions, there we go, you're going to get interest rates dropping. The federal funds rate is basically the key interest rate that the Federal Reserve sets and targets, and it affects all the other short-term interest rates. You can see what's about to happen here. Whoop. Want that to go away? Whoops. There we go. Tidy. So if you've got one side of the economy that's falling off a cliff and is starting to wreck the circular flow, the federal government and the Federal Reserve through, through stabilization policy, fiscal and monetary policy, can prop it back up and even out the bumps of the business cycle, get your economy back to sweet, sweet success. The idea is, if practiced and implemented correctly, that your economy is going to be more stable with government intervention of stabilization policy than without. And that's the end of the story. Wait, is that an asterisk right there? Hmm. Oh, right. This assumes a function in Congress, not too much debt because stabilization requires deficits if you're using fiscal policy, that policymakers see the problem in time, make good policy fast, and implement fast. And if it's monetary policy that people are willing to borrow during tough times, you can lower the interest rate, but that doesn't mean people are, you can't force them to borrow. And if all that seems like a lot, you're right. It's a lot to ask. We are learning every year a little bit more about the macro economy, so that's a good thing. But for now, for now, let's thank our lucky stars. We have automatic stabilizers, things like unemployment insurance and other programs set up whereby Congress does not have to take any specific action, but when we hit a recession, more people qualify for unemployment compensation, and therefore the system automatically stabilizes for us. Although in 2020, we already see there's some problems with this, uh, this automatic unemployment insurance. It's not getting to people very quick at all. And there is your review of macroeconomic stabilization policies, fiscal and monetary policies. Yay. Whoa, what's that one doing? She's grabbing all the money. Yay.